is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here, and we are back with some more Monster Hunter World. Now, as I was saying, you guys would have seen the cool Tavoth raid video that we did. Now, essentially, once you complete the siege, you can see here, begin the siege, join the siege, the options are grayed out for us because we have successfully just completed another siege, and you actually get rewards from these sieges. Now, you can see they're varying rarity, gold, silver, brown, bronze, whatever it's called. Now, as you more progress through the siege and kill the... Kulv Taroth, whatever it's called, I can't pronounce his bloody name to save the life of me. You essentially get the rarity increased of these rewards. Now you can see here we've gotten three gold weapons. These are called sublimated weapons. We also have received dissolved weapons, melded weapons, as well as some monster parts from her. As well as bushy tickets, which are essentially uh, enable you to uh, get rewards for your palico, I believe. So we're essentially going to claim all of them, especially these subliminated ones. These subliminated weapons provide you with the best weapons from the Cool Tavoth. You'll see here shortly when we appraise them all. The bottom three were the gold ones, and you can see we managed to get Taroth Daggers Ice. Uh, what else did we get? Taroth Pipe Water, Cool Ton Hunting Horn that fully harnesses the hidden power of the materials used to create it, and the Hammer Horn. We've already got this one already. But we don't have these two. Now you can see the varying rarities. Obviously these rarity 8 ones are stronger. We will be taking a look at those later on. I just wanted to show you guys how to go about getting these weapons. So once you manage to successfully break her horns. After you've gotten the siege level. I've, I've managed to do it on siege level 5 and siege level 7. Now you can see here if you come in to join the siege. You'll see that these are level 6 at the moment. You can see the poo suit level in the top right corner. It says level 1 while you break her items, her body parts, sorry, and track her footprints, that level will increase and it'll essentially allow your scout flies to track her longer time to defeat her, as well as making it easier to break parts on her, so essentially you have to do it over time and that is a very nice looking weapon, so I'm pretty sure you're on the hunt with us. Now essentially the best way I've found to do this is using, finding people with bows. Bows seem to do the most damage to the Cult of Oth because you can essentially use Dragon Piercer down the whole length of its body, which does a crap ton of damage. Hammer users as well are rather useful because if you manage to knock it out while, you know, grappling it, you can actually get a big bang attack on its head, which does about a thousand damage. As well as Insect Glaive users, because obviously it makes it easier for them to mount the monster as well, making it easier to knock it down. Now, in regards to her weapons, you can't actually upgrade them, which is... A bit of a strange thing, but you can't actually upgrade them. So we'll come here to our equipment box. Now you can see all these weapons here that we have received from her. We cannot wield them, which is a bit of a shame. But if we come down here and we go change equipment, we will showcase the weapons that we currently have from her. Now we have quite a few. Each of these weapons tend to differ a little bit from the other like weapon that you get. So you can see here we've got a sword and shield from her. Now this one up here is also a sword and shield from her. And you can see that it is slightly different in terms of looks as well as damage and element. You can see that one that we have at the moment is 196 as well as thunder while this one is 224 and 180 poison element. So do take that into mind if you are trying to get her weapons. So essentially you can see all these weapons from here all the way down are from her. So you get a crap ton of them. You can see there she's nice gold bludgeon. This is the Taroth Hammer Rage. Actually we don't have that other one. So you can see that she has different uh Oh, I see now. Okay, so essentially, I get it now. I was trying to figure out why there are different weapons. So essentially, her golden hammer weapons are modified by certain monsters. So this one here could obviously be modified by the Wraithalos, maybe, I believe. It looks like a Wraithalos. But this one down here, the Horn. So that's Ragia. So I would say that's the Wraithalos. And this Horn one is definitely Diabolos. You can see because the Diabolos horns on the back of it. So that essentially changes it slightly because you can see there it's got Ice Affinity now as well. So obviously these uh, blue rarity weapons are just the regular gold versions of the weapons. But the silver, like the golden ones are actually... Uh, okay, so you can see here this is probably the Raytheon or the Quepereco. Not the Quepereco, sorry. The Puki Puki, that's what it's called. The Puki Puki. So you can see it's feathers there and it's got poison. Whereas this one here, I wouldn't be able to tell you, to be honest with you. Blitz, oh, sorry, Pierce is, I think, Wraith Loss. So, the regular blue ones are, you can see this is the Basil Geist's one, but golden. That's pretty cool. Okay, so I see now. So, this Slice Water, I don't know what that one belongs to. Probably, I wouldn't be able to tell you, actually. And then you've got, what, Ice here. So, okay, that's, so it's like a neat little way for you to get golden weapons, but still have certain monster elements to them. 
and Taroth Pipe Water are different weapons, but this one is solid gold. So it's pretty cool. There's, there's quite a few weapons, so I would definitely recommend farming her for quite a bit of time just to get all the weapons. We don't know what use they're going to have later on down the line, but they're still going to be pretty useful. Now, like I said, you can't actually upgrade these ones, but the Rarity 8 ones actually have a large gem slot available to them, while the Rarity 7 ones don't have that gem slot available to them. So that is something as well to keep an eye out. So I would definitely try and farm up the Rarity 8 ones. So just essentially keep farming up the monster, and you'll eventually be able to get all her Rarity 8 weapons, because your reward level will increase the longer you fight the monster. Alrighty, guys, that'll conclude today's video. Let me know what you thought of the video down below. Let me know what you thought of the weapons, but other than that, Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.